Greetings and welcome to this very first video of Completely Beginner Intro SolidWorks. And we are going to cover uh, a number of just very basic concepts for SolidWorks. Mainly just a tour and a basic idea of how this thing works. So uh, your screen might look something like this. I probably have a bunch of other stuff down here that you don't have. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to look for this icon on your screen. If you don't have it, that's okay. We just want to double click on it or go down here to the start bar. Or if you have Windows 10, you have to find it that way. But if you just type in solid, these kinds of things will come up. And you want to look for something that looks like this, X64 edition. Now this is 2015, but this should apply to... Uh, anything before or anything pretty much after. So click on that and it'll have to make sure it has a license and a bunch of other different things and it takes a while. It's a pretty big program. Uh, might take a while to load up. My computer is pretty good. Uh, um, the has a solid state drive so it's going to load up a little faster than someone maybe with a regular uh, uh, high density drive. But you don't necessarily need some big fancy computer. Uh, anything just recent within the past couple of years, I suggest maybe you know eight gigs of memory minimum. Uh, although you could probably run it on four gigs, uh, a decent uh, graphics card. But this is uh, just a 16-inch monitor. I prefer a much larger monitor. But uh, you don't need some $2,000 gaming computer to run this software. Okay, so we start off like this. I'm going to show you one of the first things that you should do. Up here you see SolidWorks and there's this little tiny gray spot that opens up only if you happen to go run over it. These menus here are very helpful and they should always be up there but if you come out here, look, they disappear. I think it should be open by default and this is how you make it happen. You click this push pin and now it's pinned up there. If you're logged on to school computers, it's going to uh, go back to the default every time. But it's worth just going right up there and clicking that first time through. The next thing we want to do is we want to open up a part. We want to click here, and it's going to say New. If you roll over it, and uh, it might come up with a different screen here, but you just want to select Part here and click OK. And now this happens. So we're going to make a part here. But first I'm going to give you a tour through all the various bits and pieces of the screen. Of course SolidWorks up here, not much to do right there. But here's our drop down menus and these have all you know, a lot of the standard stuff and a lot of the unstandard stuff you might see, you know, new, open, close, save, that kind of stuff, how to print, uh, editing. Uh, there's a variety of normal things they like cut, copy, paste, and then there's some other things that you might not be familiar with, but that's okay. View here shows a, a lot of different settings that help you uh, look at your part or your assembly with different stuff on, stuff off. The good thing is that you don't need to learn all of these different buttons that I'm showing you right off the bat to know how to make this happen. All you need to do is learn one or two at a time, get good with those, and then move on to the next thing. Very often, if you're trying to do something, there's a button for it. So sometimes it just takes some digging. Okay, next we have insert, and that's, uh, you know, there are many other things here that you might not find up in these bars. So sometimes if you're looking for a specific thing that doesn't seem to be in these toolbars here, then it might be here in insert or tools. And this is how we display the windows. Sometimes uh, you might get it confused between view, but this is just for the window itself, not for how the part looks. And then there's some help. So there's a, a number of resources for help. Up here are some of the most commonly used general commands. So we already used the new command here. So 
now we've got something else make drawing or make assembly from part uh, there's the save printing uh, these are two of my favorites undo this is one of my absolute favorite commands here undo and that is redo so you might want to look at uh, those in time and make sure you know where they are now i think i may have used this one and put this one on the bar there's a way of customizing it options we'll go there soon and document properties and then rebuild that'll be a, a, another favorite up here we can search in the form and you should be familiar with these types of buttons from windows okay moving on down we have some of these important toolbars first one here is features and we'll discuss what a feature is and sketch okay these are the two that you'll use the most because we'll be building our part using features and building our features using sketches. Evaluate uh, allows you to do some measuring or some analysis, uh, but we won't use these buttons much at all. Same thing with Dim Expert. Moving on down, we'll look at the managers here. We have the Feature Manager, Property Manager, Configuration Manager, Dim Expert Manager, and Display Manager. Dim Expert. As I said, we're not going to be using much. Display. This is helps you figure out how to display um, some of the parts and the bodies and so on. But we're not going to use that much at all to start off with. Going backwards, Configuration Manager. This helps you uh, manage and see what kind of similar parts that you can put together out of one part. But that's a long ways down the road. Property Manager not much going on there but here's where we're going to spend a lot of time feature manager we're going to continue to build features down here and this is how we build our part is using features okay from there we can start really building the part we got a front plane top plane and right plane that identify where we can start our uh, sketches and then where they meet is the origin right here and we're going to be dealing a lot with the origin in time if you ever wonder what happened to this if your feature manager disappeared it's probably because you clicked right here for no good reason that's okay just go back over here and click that okay now notice another thing shows up right below my arrow there if I don't just click it like this if I drag this back and forth I can change the size of this just in case I needed a little more or a little less area here now up here we have a bunch of these things from view okay uh, there are more things to click on here in view but these are some of the most commonly used ones for view so we zoom to fit zoom to area previous view section uh, this one will give you different ways of looking at your part sometimes you can set this if you don't want this to come up this box thing which I think is kind of cool you can just click it off here I like having it on this can give you uh, shaded with edges simply shaded just the hidden lines removed with the visible wireframe those different views. so this is very common this will turn different things on or off this is another extension of again the, the view button over here and this will allow you to change the appearance of the model and this will change the uh, scene the background of what you're dealing with here uh, the view settings you can change that uh, if you want to play around with it you may these are similar to these commands but these will apply to the part itself this will apply to the entire program so if you click up here and you get out and you haven't saved well good luck you'll get a lot more practice if you click here you might lose your your part but it might be a good way of uh, making space in your RAM uh, but make sure you save your work save your work early save it often for SolidWorks resources this will get you another new document just another way of clicking that button uh, open a document same thing over here uh, there, these are uh, all fairly valuable the tutorials can be very very good if you want to uh, try to get some other practice uh, and that's all part of getting started this is the the uh, design library 
where you can download a bunch of different parts that are pre-made which are pretty cool but we'll go into that later um, and you can explore these other different things this is a file explorer and these are just some other different things that you can uh, go to this is a forum where people discuss SolidWorks and you might get some good information I'm more comfortable simply just surfing the inf internet in case I uh, have a hard time finding something all right moving on uh, down at the bottom here you'll see model and motion study motion study. this doesn't have to be down here at all but it is part of the default and we won't use it anytime soon but later on uh, in this course we will this little thing here can change your view just like up here if I click on the Z the X or the Y it'll be easier to see once we make a model and uh, uh, but you can even click it and drag it around to change the views Okay, and then over here, there's a very important spot. It's called for units. And so the unit system here is, uh, by default, millimeter, gram, second. Often we work in inches, so I might change that to inch, pound, second. And I uh, encourage you to do the same thing right now. Just click here, click on inch, pound, second. Uh, I can't tell you how many students forget to do this, and then when something's in inches, uh, they actually make it in millimeters and they wonder why one part doesn't fit very well uh, to another part and it's off by a factor of 25.4 which is how many millimeters there are in an inch and um, yeah they regret it so make sure when you're starting a new part that you click on the units that you intend to have one more thing about the toolbars is that sometimes students say hey uh, what happened to this well uh, the SolidWorks resources, uh, if you click on this button, no, no, it doesn't get smaller, it gets bigger. No, we wanted it to get smaller. All you got to do is go here to the edge where it allows you to make it bigger or smaller and drag it over here. Very often uh, you want as much space here as possible. If you need to bring it out, back, go back over here, click on it, drag it, there you go. So I'm going to put that down here. Or if you did want to uh, check out the resource. All you have to do is click over here and bam, it shows up. Okay. Uh, what happens sometimes is that people drag on features and oh my goodness, what happened? The, the command manager that's normally up here drags into the middle of the screen. Uh, it's possible you want to move it around, you want to uh, use it, but normally it's just fine at the top of your screen. So as you drag it around like this, Notice how there's one, two, three of these little boxes that show up towards the edges of the screen. So all you need to do is drag it up to that box and it'll go there. Now if you wanted to have it on the side, that's totally up to you. Uh, but I'm going to be doing all of my videos with this in the default position up at the top. And one final way of making that happen is simply double clicking on the very top of that toolbar and it goes right back up to the last place it was in. All right, now that we have had a tour of the workspace, we'll get down to actually making something. I'm going to start with a very simple part here. We can do this a couple ways actually. We can start with a sketch and click here and I'll just choose the front plane on which to make the sketch. Notice if I click on sketch this yellow thing comes up saying select a plane. Now later on after we have some surfaces it might say select a plane or a surface or a separate sketch or something like that but do what the yellow says. 
front plane and notice how we have the origin here. I'm going to make a rectangle and I'm going to use these things called relation. I'm going to right click here, select the midpoint, hold the control key down, select the origin and then click on vertical so that one is vertically aligned to the other. I can't move it back and forth. Oh, hey, look what I can do. The midpoint of this will always be immediately above that. And since it's a rectangle, same thing will happen here. Notice it's a good idea to select the midpoint first. Then I'm going to hold the control key down, select that, and I'm going to make that horizontal. So now this rectangle will always be symmetric about the origin. This helps us to really get the intent of the designer or the design intent across because I want this to be symmetric. Then I'm going to dimension this side here and notice how the units come up. 1.7 blah 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 inches. I'll just call it 2 inches. If I just type in 2 and I have the uh, units as inches, then it assumes I mean two inches. But watch what happens if I decide to use millimeters here. I'm going to say, okay, this is 75 millimeters. I just, if I type in mm, it knows what I'm talking about. And it changes it to 2.95 inches, which is 75 millimeters. So just re double click on that, type in three, and now notice how my lines turn from blue to black. That means that it knows everything it needs to know to know exactly where those lines are supposed to be with respect to the origin. It's always going to do everything with respect to the origin. And we want to make sure those lines turn black. So I click right up here, which means exit sketch. So now I have a 2D sketch. Yes, this is supposed to be 3D modeling, so we need to add a third dimension. And that we can click here for features and click on extruded boss base. It tells me to either select a plane or to an existing sketch. So again, do what's in the yellow. Well, I already have an existing sketch, which is right here. Now, some weird things can happen if you just click on the line here. So I'm going to click on this sketch here. Notice how the feature manager tree can come up here when it's doing something else on the left hand side. So that's where I got this from. So I can click on sketch two and now it gives me a distance in this case the default is 0.1 inch that I want to extrude it through. So I'm just going to tell it to extrude it five inches. I can select which direction I want it to go, either to that direction, to that side, or to that side. There's some other settings here we won't go through. And here I have it. Okay. If I want to change anything with a sketch, say, I can right click on the sketch and go to Edit Sketch, and I can change the sketch. I just double clicked out here to get out of that. I could have also clicked on exit sketch or if I want to change anything about the feature that last third dimension and I can go here so instead of going blind which just tells you to go out a certain distance I can do what's called a mid plane this is really helpful and I go half of this distance out one way half out the other way okay I'm gonna build onto this feature by making another feature and I'm going to show you a uh, different way of doing it. Instead of going to sketch first, you can go to uh, extruded boss base first, and then it'll tell you to sketch. There's a couple different ways of making it happen. So I'm going to go to, uh, in this case, extruded cut, and it says select a face or planar face or an existing sketch. So I'm going to go to this space. I'm going to make a hole. So I'm going to click on circle right up there. that and notice how I don't care about the dimension yet just got the circle on there and notice how I did click right on the origin make a dimension on this now it'll default for a circle it'll default to a diameter and 
And uh, if it, you have an arc, if you don't have a full circle, it'll default to a radius. And then I exit my sketch. And then it has a default of blind as well. But for this cut, I want it to go through all. There's a bunch of different options, but I'll go through all, which means it'll go through anything it runs into. There we go. Okay, so now we see that uh, this hole goes all the way through. And I will put one more feature on here, and that is a fillet. I can fill it specific edges if I want to, like this here. Just click those specific edges. Notice how those edges show up in orange, like that. And then I click on them, and then they are highlighted in blue. Or I can select an entire face, like this. And it will fill it the entire face. And I'm making it look easy. Sometimes we've got some pretty complex geometry that uh, gives you problems. Now watch this. If I change the fillet parameters from 0.1 to something larger, now notice this stuff runs into each other and it can get really hairy and might cause problems. If I make this too big, it won't even make it because these uh, fillets have run into each other or they run into another face. So you have to choose your sizes wisely. And here we have our part with the three different features. We've got the boss extrude that had a sketch, this cut extrude that has a sketch, and then finally a fillet. We can change these if we wanted to not double click too fast, and then I call it the box. And I call this the hole, and call these the rounds. All right. And you can do the same thing with sketches and the planes and so on and so forth. So this is the basic idea of how we make parts using sketches and features. In the succeeding videos, we will uh, use more of the tools. And again, all you need to do is learn one or two buttons to push at a time, and then you can move on to the new ones. You don't have to learn everything all at once. A couple more things, and then we'll be done with this particular video. If you want to make changes, like I said, you can right click on the various sketches or features but if you just need to make changes to a dimension you can just click on the part or the feature and notice how these dimensions show up you've got the five here three here and the two here and you can just double click here go from five to one now notice how it didn't change the part that's okay just go up here to rebuild Click that button and it will rebuild it according to the changes. Now, when you double click on this, uh, your dimensions might look more like this. Well, that's because the default is often the ISO standard. Well, uh, I personally don't like the ISO standard. Um, maybe it's just because it's not what I'm used to. So I think it makes more sense to use the ANSI standard. So go to Options. Make sure you, instead of being on this one, go to Document Properties tab. Go to ANSI for Overall Drafting Standard. Hit OK. Okay, there are many other settings in those options, but uh, that's the one you might want to familiarize yourself with first. So that goes double for when you're making the drawings. Okay, so make it to ANSI. Finally, we are going to save the part. File, save. You find your MT-155 folder. 
a particular folder. Now, you should put your name in the actual title. You can put underscores on beneath it or not. It's okay. But please don't uh, label your uh, part without putting your name in front of it. Because if everybody calls theirs sample box, then I don't know whose is which as I'm going through them. So make sure your name is here. I will return it to you ungraded if you don't have that as part of the file name. All right, so that concludes this first video. And you do not need to send this particular file in, but uh, you should have gone through the uh, steps. I hope that this helped and look forward to improving your solid modeling skills in the next videos.